In this podcast, I sit down with Mark Sherman, our top agent on the Pacific side of the Baja Peninsula. We talk about what the market's doing now, January 2024. It has shifted as of mid-2023. Find out what the details are. You're really going to like this one. Mark, thanks for joining us. No, thanks for having me. It's um, good to be back and good to be at this new location. Local yeah, you studio. like the media office, I do. podcast studio? Yeah, I really do. It looks <laughs> great. So I wanted you on because uh, we were talking last week and for the past really few months, the market in Cerritos, Pescadero, Todos Santos, along the Pacific, it's changed. Um, you've been there for how many years now? I have been there now a little over 16 years, I believe. 2007 mm -hmm. is when I made the move full-time in right. November. Yeah, and you're coming from San Diego. Uh, a little further north. I have family in San Diego. I was in uh, Sacramento, basically. Okay. All right. And when you came down, you weren't in real estate originally. You were, well, interestingly, I was, my background is in new home construction. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually a licensed general contractor in California. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes I do mention to my clients that it is somewhat ironic that I'm now on the selling side after so many years of being on the buy or I'm sorry, sorry, the building right, side, right? Because my experience with real estate agents was so so during yeah. those years, yeah. Um, and so now to find myself on the other side is it's, I guess, a twist that I didn't foresee coming. So what, I mean, you build houses and you have meh, a so-so perception of real estate agents. How has that going into being a real estate agent years ago changed the way you perceive it now? How many years later? Well, the interesting thing is that my perception actually shifted right about the time that I left that area because mm -hmm. we took on a spec home, which was the most expensive spec home that had ever been attempted within the community that we were working in. Yeah. And this was right at the end of 2007, prior to the market taking a hard turn down. So we had a lot of capital tied up in this project. Mm -hmm. So we sought the help of an experienced agent in the area. And guess what? That agent actually had a client that was waiting for a spectacular home to come to market in that area. Yeah. We sold the home to that client. And to this day, we look back on it and we say, you know what? If it had not been for that agent, we could have been caught holding a very expensive spec home right. and maybe even wound up totally upside down on it. Sure. So that, that single event you know, made me realize because the market there was so hot prior to that, that mm -hmm. we didn't need real estate agents to sell our spec homes. Right. We would buy a piece of dirt. We would get a plan. We would put a nice rendering up when the home uh, began construction and we would sell them off of those signs. So at that point I was going, you know, well, what did these guys do? We don't, I don't see the, the need. Right. And then, as I mentioned, this experience uh, that we had with this spec home really opened my eyes to, okay, there are, you know, even in a hot market, this particular individual was able to guide us to the buyer that we were looking for. Right. So that shifted my perception of real estate agents right then and there. And that was 2007 going to 08. You got lucky. You timed it just right. Um, yeah. And then you go through the whole crisis in the housing yeah. market in the States. And then you move here in what year? So it was November of 2007 when I moved here, and it was probably June or July when we uh, closed on the spec home okay. that I'm mentioning. Yeah. yeah. And so then you saw a really bad real estate market down here Oh yeah, in the Baja, and that's when you got started selling real estate. Uh, I started a little bit later, but mm -hmm. we were still in the tail end of, I don't know, there were probably eight years following 2008 before things really started to kick back into gear. Right. I entered in 2015 and at that point in time, I mean, it was a ghost town. I, re Cerritos. I remember yeah. when we first met, it must have been your first year, you were working at Coal Banker and you had that 
and they still have the small office there in Cerritos. Yeah. And I had booked an appointment. There were condominiums that were already built and up on the hill. What, what's the name of the project? There? That would be Villas de Cerritos Beach. Yes, Speech. yes. Yeah. And you showed me um, a condo over there. Yeah. And it was in the summertime. And you were saying, oh, it's dead. It's dead. It's like there's no one. And you were selling like $60,000 lots. Like forty to $60,000 lots. Right. That was like the bread and butter. I yeah. mean, doing... 35 transactions a year, right. which sounds impressive until you add up the bottom line and they're right. all forty to $60,000 sales. Mm -hmm. So that was uh, how I got into the, the business. So five, six years later, what does it look like now for your business? Oh my goodness. Well, uh, here's a perfect example. The first lot that I ever sold in Cerritos closed at $29,000. Okay. And this was in 2016. Mm -hmm. And I just resold that lot, bare dirt, nothing ever done to it. I believe we closed at 175, I have to, to look. So pretty Five significant times. appreciation just on that dirt. But really a lot of the people that I sold these dirt lots to went on to build homes on them. Mm -hmm. And I have now brought to market and sold many of the homes that were built by the people who purchased those lots back in that time period. The last few years, you joined us two or three years ago. It's been, I think, three years next month. And you're a top sales agent on our team, like company-wide, but specifically on the Pacific side. Right. And you've had some killer years, Yeah. even being able to take off a month or a month and a half last year. Yeah. Just go surf the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to do a couple of dream trips last year. And still have a, an amazing 2023, but you actually saw the market change yeah. at some point last year. When did that start changing? I would say that things began to level off around July of mm -hmm. 2023. Okay. Yeah. So you did that Bali trip. I you came did. back and you're like, what the heck is going on? A Where's little bit. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And then, so where we are right now, the final days of January, 2024, right. what, what has happened? What, what are you... What are you busy with? And what if I'm a buyer, how should my expectations of where the market is now compared to the last three years? Okay, yeah. so uh, as we touched on, things began to level off around uh, halfway through mm -hmm. last year. Um, however, the really interesting thing that I'm seeing is that the interest in the area has not declined. There are still a lot of tours. There are still a lot of people who are interested in owning something but the inventory was so depleted about the time that the buying began to cool off. A lot of sellers brought inventory to market attempting to price it as though the radical appreciation that we were experiencing had not cooled down at all. Mm -hmm. So we're currently seeing a lot of price reductions, which leads some people to believe that prices have gone down. I'm not seeing prices actually going down. What I'm seeing are listings that were overpriced when they hit the market yep. being reduced to get back in line with where things were about halfway through last year. Right. So as I mentioned, I've been seeing a ton of tours, I would say on par, if not more than what I saw during the same period last year. Mm -hmm. However, these my clients are informed. They've been watching the market. They understand what's going yeah. on. And if somebody has been patiently watching the market for the last couple of years, and they understand that things have just begun to cool off, a lot of them are inclined to sit back and watch the market and say, well, are things going to drop even further? Yeah. Now, what I anticipate happening is a big wave of sales a little bit further into 2024 as some of the people who have patiently been watching the market mm -hmm. and waiting mm -hmm. uh, realize that we are not seeing prices going down. We're just seeing a correction to get overpriced listings back in line with where the market is. Yeah. And I anticipate that it'll be the same snowball effect that we've seen yeah. many times before where a group of people are watching the market. As soon as the first few begin to move, everybody else is gonna say, okay, it's time to do this. Let's pull the trigger. So. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And the price reductions we're seeing are uh, more normalizing what the should truly be. And we'll be able to see it at the end or halfway through the year on what closes 
compared to last year. Absolutely. And we're going to see what we saw 23 to 22. There were less number of units selling, but the prices went up. So even though you have list prices on overzealous sellers raising it too high, they do price reductions. Right. If you only look at that measure and you say, oh, the market's crashing in terms of prices, right. then you get a false sense of what the market's exactly. doing. But what is it actually selling for compared to last year? Right. And my prediction is it'll be stable. If not, still see a 3 to 5% appreciation. Yeah, that's exactly what I anticipate seeing as well. Another interesting thing that I'm seeing happening in the Pacific right now, there has been uh, a significant amount of activity amongst the luxury mm. listings in the mm. zone. Uh, What's luxury for two you? Two to four million dollars. Okay. I've seen probably four to five properties sell at that price range over the last four to five weeks, mm -hmm. which would be, I mean, the luxury market in our zone is something that really only emerged a couple of years ago. Right. It was almost non-existent prior yeah. to three If you years. get something over a million dollars, you're like exactly. singing in the streets. Exactly. And I remember back in 2015, 16, 17, there was, you know, there were only maybe two, three transactions per year mm -hmm. that exceeded a million dollars mm -hmm. in the zone. Mm -hmm. So now to see, uh, like I said, four or five transactions between two to four million dollars in five weeks, yep. uh, that's a lot of activity at those price points for those are zone. oceanfront. Uh, not all of them, oh, but a significant portion. Yeah, there was an off market. Uh, I would refer to it as a compound. It's a walled one acre compound that broke $4 million off market. Yeah. So it's, it's great to see activity at those price points. No, absolutely. And when you are touring clients now in the last few months and you're not, they're not pulling the trigger. Right. So what are they telling you? A lot of them are inclined to, as I mentioned, continue to watch the market because so many of them were hesitant to jump in during the pandemic and post-pandemic right. frenzy, if you will, yeah. where we were experiencing multiple offers, bidding wars, yeah. over asking. Yeah. Um, so now that that has cooled off, a lot of the clients who watched that happen are thinking, do I buy something now or do I continue to watch the market in yeah. hopes that prices may dip below where they were at the peak? And again, that's not what I am seeing happening. The attractive and correctly priced inventory is turning over. Yep. Um, again, there's a lot of overpriced listings and the price reductions are happening all of the time. But the prices are not going down. They are just being brought back into alignment with where the market was halfway through last year. So a lot of property tours, like last 30 days, how many unique buyer clients have you toured? In the last 30 days, I would say at least 20. Holy cow. So every one and a half days, you're yeah. going on a tour. Yeah. And, and what are they looking for? Houses, condos, lots? Primarily houses at this point in okay. time. Yeah, I would say that the raw dirt, people seem to be looking more for the turnkey home rather than to build out the dream. And I think a part of that is people always are a little bit more cautious about building in a foreign country. Yeah. But the way the exchange rate is, the way inflation has treated uh, construction materials and labor. Yeah. I mean, you're coming from a construction background. I yeah. mean, it's even more scary these days. Yeah. And the project costs can get way out of hand. Yeah. Just talking to a client, his project is a half a million dollars more than he anticipated. So no longer is it a spec home. It ends up becoming maybe a permanent or a second home residence. I've seen exactly that happen in my zone multiple times. People that wind up spending twice as much as they anticipated. Mm -hmm. We all know that not only did uh, the cost of materials increase dramatically over this last cycle, but also most of the reliable builders became so stretched thin mm -hmm. that their prices went up mm -hmm. and people were passing, you know, what might have been a nice little job to put some food on the table before all of a sudden, well, I have three clients yep. that are looking to do, you know, multi-million dollar projects. So I have seen this where people end up going over budget and wind up 
actually living full time in the home in Mexico that was intended as maybe a second home or vacation home. Price ranges, what are they looking for for houses? What's the range? I would say that at this point in time, I'm seeing people shopping. The The average client is probably looking to spend between 650 to 950 okay. in the zone. And what would they be looking for in that price range? Uh, three bedroom homes. Mm -hmm. Obviously, everybody wants to either have a view or be close to the water. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would say the, the services are services important for the buyers. Yeah, definitely. Um, there are a certain percentage of people that don't mind being off grid. Yeah. However, having a connection to uh, the electric and water is going to make your life a lot easier. It's just one more thing that you have to be conscious of. Right. If you're off grid, you have to think about, you know, where are the batteries in my solar system? Do the panels need cleaning? Do I need to sure. order a truck? Um, for people that are looking to simplify their life, being on grid is going to, as I mentioned, eliminate a couple of things that you need to be conscious of all the time. Percentage wise of the offerings in Cerritos, how many are off grid without water? And then the same question for Pescadero and Toto Santos percentage wise, what would you say? So that's a great question. In Cerritos itself, almost 100% trucked water. Yeah. The electricity has uh, expanded throughout the area over the last seven or eight years to the point that it's very easy to find a property with a connection mm -hmm. to the electric grid. However, there is currently no municipal water in Cerritos. 99.9% right. .9 of those homes are on trucked water. Mm -hmm. But as you move a little bit further to the north, when you get into Gavilan, when you get into San Pedrito, mm -hmm. into Pescadero proper, mm -hmm. those homes almost 100% have a connection to either Sapa, which is the municipal water or the Ajito water line in that area, as well as electricity. So you're 100% on grid there. Yeah. There's almost a line that you can draw between Cerritos proper and Gavilan, where you're going to be looking at trucked water, versus a connection to water. And how do you find buyers requirements? Are they very strict? Like they say, no, I need to be on grid. And so it eliminates Cerritos and then you have to look uh, Gavilan to the north. Yeah. Yeah. Some people definitely, uh, if the box of having, mm -hmm. you know, piped water yeah. isn't checked, we can go ahead and eliminate it. But the interesting thing is, Probably 25% of my clients are actually interested in something that's off grid because they like the idea of a smaller carbon footprint, right. of not having to pay an electric bill. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you would still have to pay for trucked water, mm -hmm. but no electric bills. Mm -hmm. So I'd say 75, 25 between make or break okay. off grid versus on grid. Okay, cool. And you said that this year you expect prices to be very stable, um, maybe a little bit of appreciation. Um, you only have done one deal so far, right, yeah. this year. Yeah. And normally you would do multiple deals every month. Right. Where do you see your business this year? Well, that's a great question. I would love to be able to continue to produce the type of numbers that I have during the course of the last three years. Mm -hmm. And it, we will have to wait and see if my theory regarding the group of buyers who are continuing to watch the market creating a snowball effect uh, plays out the way that I'm hoping that it does. But I do have, I'm hopeful that I will be able to do comparable numbers with a smaller amount of transactions. Got it. That would be the ideal situation for this year. I mean, the important thing is because you have so many years of experience, you have so many clients that you have serviced that, and you're still, you still have clients that you're showing properties to yeah. update them on the market, follow the trends and really look at, okay, what we have done in typically in the last three years as real estate agents, we set them up on a property e alert on the MLS search criteria prices, size of the house or condo, and we just let the technology take care of itself. But if we're touching 
each one of their searches every single week. Right. And then we're watching what's coming on the market, off the market, given their search criteria. We can really get a good sense and a healthy pulse of the market in their niche. So then you can time it exactly well. And that's what I think we could be doing is more of as real estate professionals. So you're turning those property tours that they're not ready yet because they're gonna wait for the market. Well, they're right. waiting, they're ready. So they just need the information and the 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 knob, like thumbs right. up, right? Right. And it's gonna happen. Is it gonna happen this year? Well, depending on what you're looking for, I think if you're a buyer in this market, there it could be this year. Yeah. And it also could be with a lot of new construction going on, time a uh, project where maybe the seller, developer, builder runs out of money. Right. So they just want to recover what they have into it. Right. And that's a great opportunity also. I saw that um, over a decade ago when the recession hit us big time here in right. Baja, where properties were in some cases halved. Yep. And people were getting houses in Palmia for under 1.5 million. Right. And now they're four and a half million, $5 million houses. Yep. So those opportunities, the thing is, as a real estate professional, if you haven't been selling in a certain area, you don't know, right? You don't know right. what has happened in the past. Right. But you do. Yeah. And you can tell your clients, this is what I saw 10 years ago. This is what's going to happen this go around. Yeah. And so I'm watching it every day and I'm seeing the properties because I do 20 tours a month. Right. Right. So I know the properties. Yeah. I know the ones that come on. I just check the hot sheet every day. Yep. And so it's not just you. I think it's every single one of our agents. Right. Any agent out there should be doing that. And you actually came into the office this morning because of a program that we started dialing for dollars. Yeah, 100%. And uh, I definitely intend to continue participating yep. in the program. Yeah. Uh, I was able to engage with one individual this morning, mm -hmm. and uh, we will see what continues to be produced mm -hmm. from the group of leads that I took on this morning, and I look forward to taking on more. Another thing, Mark, is what I found with agents participating in this program is that they, not only the leads that we give you that day, right, but the leads you already have, you're like, oh, that's a good idea. Someone else in the group says an idea, and you, you take that idea and you start contacting your other clients. Right. And what I heard from JJ, he's a Cabo agent of ours. He, a couple days ago, didn't get any contacts from the leads that were assigned to him that day, but he participated on the very first day, December 26. Okay. So he said, I had someone engage me on that one and I got an appointment booked as a result. Cool. So it was people from two, three weeks ago. Right. That were engaging. It doesn't matter. Right. The key is every day you do the work and it's going to start paying you back. 100%. You know? Yep. Um, anything else you want to say about the market? Buyers, sellers that they should be aware of? Well, sellers do need to be aware that the prices are no longer continuing to appreciate at crazy rates mm -hmm. because I am receiving a lot of calls from sellers and it's very important to explain to them exactly what is going on because it is no longer realistic to expect to shatter the record for the most recent sale of a comparable property. Yeah. Uh, you're looking to be in line with the comps. Yep. And there are a lot of people who are kind of showing up to the party late, so to speak, mm -hmm. and thinking that they're going to sell their property for more than, than anyone ever has. And I, I think that that window has closed yep. and that sellers do need to be aware that we've seen the peak yeah. and we can price in accordance with the peak, but we are not going to be achieving 20% above yeah. the highest comp. That's just not in the cards. Even 10% I think is unrealistic. I agree. Price it to the last sale. Yeah. You know, and that's it. Yeah. You know, um, you already have baked in there like 50% appreciation right. over the last few years. So In some cases, 100. Right. I mean, the desirable properties in my area saw 30% plus for three years running, which is, I mean, almost unheard of right. in any market. Yeah. So things had to calm down at some point. If you're a property owner that bought land from you or from another agent um, off market, 
five, 10 years ago, what your, would your advice to them be? Uh, come talk to me. Yeah. And I will gladly not only bring you up to speed on exactly what's going on in the market, but if you're interested in selling, I can, uh, we can have a conversation regarding what my team can do for you and your capital gains as cool. well. Perfect. Mark, thanks. Always a pleasure. Thanks for having me. And until the next one, bye for now. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Nick Fong Podcast. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast and the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Ronaval Real Estate. And follow Nick on Instagram at Nick Fong underscore Ronaval. Ready to find your Baja dream home? Check out the latest property listings at ronaval.com or findmexicohouses.com. Hasta luego.